In this video, I want to go over one of my best trades that I've taken so far in the past month. I want to talk about what I saw, my analysis backing the setup, and I'm also going to show you where I entered, where I exited, and we can learn two very important lessons from this trade that not only helps me in all of my trades, but also I'm confident it's going to help you all in future trades now that you're going to understand these points that we're going to go over. I'm going to relate it to the chart and I'm going to break it down in depth of my exact thought process throughout the market. Before we get into it, I'm going to post a link in the description below to follow me on Instagram. I definitely recommend doing so at Invest the Trade. I post daily trading recaps on here along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you're not going to find anywhere else. Link is in the description below. You're seriously missing out if you're not following it. But now, let's get right into these setups. First thing I want to say is you must trust your analysis. You have to have high conviction in the setups or else you should not be taking them. The reason why it's my analysis, and I always say this, I actually there's a video in the course talking about uh, the best analysis is your own analysis. The reason why we come up with analysis is because it's something that we're accustomed to. It's something that we may have seen before, and it is based off of our edge or our system, and we know our edge is what makes us money consistently in the long, long run. I only trade when my edge is present. It's I'm very repetitive with this because I personally see a lot of people in the trading community entering and exiting blindly without a solid reasoning backed by confirmation and thesis points for them to enter the trade. They're getting in and out at random points when they feel it's right. That's not the way to trade and you have to only trade when your edge is present. And a lot of people can't trust themselves. They don't have confidence they don't have conviction in these setups is because they don't have an edge. I trust myself because I'm trading my edge and my edge I've tested, I've back tested it, I've forward tested it, and it's what makes me money consistently in the long run. Our emotions try to protect us at all costs. It They try to trick us. Our brain it likes being comfortable. We don't like exploring what's unknown. And the reality with the market is every outcome is unknown. We don't know the result. However, when we see our edge, we know it has a high odd of working out. The greatest amount of growth comes in the uncomfortable stages. Complacency kills. Growth comes when we put risk on the table and when we trust our analysis and our edge. When we get in our heads too much, it happens to me, it happens to everybody. When we get in our heads too much, our thoughts try to trick us, they try to protect us because we're trying to adapt to situations that we are not aware of or we've never been in before. And I could tell you, before I put any trade on, I never know what's going to work out. I don't know if I'm going to enter, if I'm going to lose, or I'm going to win. It's unknown. But what is known is if I could trust myself, trust my edge, and trust that I could keep my emotions out of the setup as best as I can because everything else is noise. 95% of the time that I go against this, I lose. It's the, it's the reality of it. And it sucks taking a losing trade because I didn't trust myself or I went against my edge. There's no worse feeling trade in the market when it's like that. And I have no problem losing if I'm following my plan and going with my analysis. But every time I deviate away from it, I lose. And there's not much worse in the market than that. And I know a lot of people could feel that and relate. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the setup on the S&P 500, July 22nd. It was the last Friday. And in the pre-market plan, I post these every single day in my Discord, setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and potential trading scenarios. The Discord is included and available only for Investor Trade members. So on the S&P 500, we had a target of 4,000, as you can see it from the chart right here. I'm actually going to maximize this. Pull Discord back up. So yesterday we had a target of 4,000 to be very cautious for longs. In fact, this is where we sold our longs the day prior on Thursday, July 21st. We had demand on the way up and scenario number one was I cannot be bullish below 4,000 and 410 supply. So this red line here and this pink supply zone right here, I said in the pre-market plan, I cannot be bullish at the open below these levels. I even put it in bold. And I said I would be looking for signs of sellers here first. Now the reason why I said I cannot be bullish 
and why I first will be looking for sellers is very, very simple. So the first thing is let's first understand where this supply zone came from. I'm going to go to a higher time frame chart. I'll go to an hourly chart and let's fast for, uh, go back to this area back on when was this June 9th, 2022. We had an area that was responsible. If we look at a you know further out picture of a long consolidation period, right? Followed by a very strong move to the downside. Then we get some consolidation before the market even opens up, followed by a strong move to the downside. I knew since we had a very large aggressive drop over here and this consolidation over here, that if we could get above this supply zone, there was not much resistance or supply for us to trade 4094, which is the next supply zone. Now, the reason why this was a very important zone was because this was responsible for an area on the chart based off market structure that we had an aggressive sell off that sellers were present and we have to add on top of something I'm going to explain right now in my next point. But now we have the supply zone. The second reason was the market has made a very strong uh, move off from the lows starting from last Thursday, June, uh, uh, July 14th where we rallied about 300 points off of the lows. Every single day, maybe minus one day, uh, we had a, every, a strong rally to the upside where supply zones were getting destroyed and everybody was buying the dip. It was working out very well and we were killing the longs all week. Now, on top of this, because of that, a lot of people had in their minds to watch the 4,000 mark on the S&P 500. This was an area that they were looking to get long. They felt if I could get above 4,000, we're going to rally another 100, 200 points. It's true. However, we had a roadblock in the way at this 4,010 supply zone, which is why in the Discord, I said I cannot be bullish at the open. I'm going to be looking for signs of sellers here first. To the downside, I really didn't have a plan to take the market long other than demand at 3980, 3971. But for the upside, our plan was to take the market short at supply. I didn't really have a continuation play to the downside. The second point I want to make here is when many are bullish, find out ways you could be bearish. When many are bearish, figure out how to be bullish. I saw on Friday, and I'm sure a lot of people could vouch for this, and I'm probably going to get shit for it, but a lot of chat rooms were alerting to their members to, at the open, buy spy calls, or in the first 15 minutes, let's get long spy, it's above 4,000, it's going to break out. And there were many people on Twitter, many chat rooms looking to get the market long at the open, not realizing we were inside of supply. This is... A cherry on top of some analysis. This is the icing on the cake. This sometimes will give me added confirmation to take the market short or long. It's putting myself in the perspective of majority of retail traders, where they're looking to get long, where they're looking to get short, figuring out where they're entering, where they're stopping out, and just understanding the auction between buyers and sellers. This gives you a serious edge in itself, is if you could figure out where majority are long, where majority of short, where their stop losses are gonna be, because if we can reverse engineer their thought process, if 90% of these traders fail, why think like 90% of them? If everybody's doing, okay, I'm getting along the S&P above 4,000, the chances of it working out, it still could happen, but it's less likely if everybody is looking to get long or short, especially retail traders, which understanding where they enter and where they stop out at gives you a serious edge, it's just understanding the auction between buyers and sellers. Now, as the trade goes with this analysis in mind, I was looking for ways to be bearish since everybody was bullish and I had high conviction in this setup. The reason why I had high conviction in the setup was because of the three points that I just mentioned before about why the supply zone was created and overall the whole intraday theme. So with this in mind, I now use price and volume to figure out if I should enter and where I should enter. Not only were market leading equities on the weaker side, on the tape, and really what gave me the confirmation to click the buy or sell button, um, I don't have a recording of the level two in time and sales at that point, um, but watching the tape, I could only show you what it looks like on bookmap right now. 
on the tape, what this is going to show you now, every bubble is a aggressive market buy or sell order. And every line in the background is a passive buy or sell order, depending if we are above or below price. So essentially, it's a time and sales level two, just visually represented in a different way. Now, right where my cursor is at right here at 4010 is at the supply zone. We had a very large passive sell order at that price. Now, what this tells me is there's a seller present at supply and we have a lot of traders looking to get long at the supply zone. This didn't give me good confirmation just yet. However, the market did start moving lower. And really what gave me added confirmation was this right here is as we came back above or below 4010, as we started making our way higher to this level, a seller kept putting a, a decent sized passive order, nothing huge, um, defending 4010. So there was a passive seller looking to get in a larger position. Was it one seller? I don't know. Was it multiple sellers? Maybe. But 410, there were large, aggressive, passive prints coming through. And I got short with that analysis. As the market was coming down, 943 was my entry right here as soon as I saw this very large seller get filled. So now I'm in short. This is exactly what the market looks like right here. And I'm not going to lie my stop loss on trades like this will be at the high. Normally, I'm getting short right here, 4,008. My stop loss is above the high at 4,012. I'm risking about four points to make potentially 30 points. So very, very good risk to reward. Um, that's how I structure a lot of my trades. However, for this trade, because of everything that I've mentioned so far with everybody being bullish here, and uh, with me having a high conviction, not only in my own analysis, but also in this supply zone specifically, because I knew it was a key zone and very important area that sellers once in the past were very present. I had very, very high conviction in the setup and this could have backfired on me. I will not lie. Did I get lucky? Did I not get lucky? I don't know. Uh, it worked out. I had a, one of my best trades I've taken so far this month. And now I'm in short. Again, more selling pressure came through around 945. What you're going to see on the tape is, you know, more buying coming through, getting absorbed by a seller. So with this information, I'm actually going to zoom out and look at this. You know, we have clear selling activity near the highs, some more passive orders up above us. But I just liked how 4010, which was the exact point of the supply zone, was an important reference area and the market was having a hard time getting above. Now with this in mind, we broke above the high. And if I did have my stop loss at the high, which was the proper move in this example, I would have got stopped out right here. No doubt about it, I would have exited the trade and it would have been a losing one. It's gonna bring me into my next point. However, with this setup, and I don't recommend this for beginner traders, was my stop loss was not based off of a level, it was more based off of how price was going to react inside of this supply zone due to high conviction in the zone. Meaning, if the market started to come up inside of this supply zone and we maybe formed demand, maybe had a strong buying pressure down here by the volume subgraph, then maybe, or definitely I would have stopped out of this trade if we got that information. However, I was in this for the high a day fake out and in the, in the course, I actually have a video for uh, retail trapped traders. And what this tells me is a lot of traders, again, were bullish here. They were longing a high day break. If I don't have a supply zone here, right? Let's just remove the whole thought process of a supply zone. Right here, from an intraday perspective, looks very bullish. Do you guys not agree? Putting in higher highs, putting in higher lows. Bouncing off VWAP. This looks extremely, extremely bullish. However, you add a supply zone here, you add everything that I'm explaining, a lot of traders were getting long up here near the highs. Now, what this tells me is that this was a stop loss hunt. Meaning, for those who were short here, maybe stopping out at the high. For those that are not short and are looking to get long, we could validate this point by look at this very aggressive market buy orders coming through, very large green bubbles, but it was inside of supply, getting absorbed, 
by passive sellers and look at this 40110 level again you know it's just very large size and just sellers were absorbing every single move up and trapping a bunch of late longs looking to get in above um, you know the spectrum was leaning towards the bullish side but I couldn't be bullish because of supply so now I'm still in short and originally my target was 3980 supply and again this was one of the setups that I just had high conviction in. It's based off of my experience, which is why I think a lot of value comes from the Discord because I could just update my thoughts in real time of what I'm watching. If someone hasn't experienced a market like this or a move like this, then they're, they don't have the muscle memory of that experience and they're not going to be able to recognize certain scenarios. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It, you know, There's nothing that works 100% of the time. But having screen time and experience like I do, I recognize certain scenarios that I may have recognized in the past that worked out and I just replay it and replicate it. This was a scenario very, very similar. We haven't seen these in a while that replicated an all day sell off as long as we did not find buyers at demand. Now, will not lie, when my target hits, 99% of my trades, I'm getting out as soon as my target hits and I don't wait for any signs of buyers and sellers. Sometimes it backfires, sometimes it doesn't. However, I'm still in short and we hit my target of 3980 demand. At this point, equities are very weak. They're below their key levels. NASDAQ is rejecting supply and selling off as well. Everything was leaning towards the uh, bear side. And the fact that I knew a bunch, this was a huge trap right here. Huge liquidity grab. The market moves based off of liquidity. Where are majority of traders long? Where are majority of traders short? Where are they stopping out at? Where are they entering? This was a huge trap. It was a constant tug of war battle at 4,000. As we pulled back, many were getting long in this area at 4,000. And I knew that if the market to start coming down, it's going to fuel a lot of sh uh, longs to stop out. On top of this, it was also a Friday. Fridays tend to make some moves where it's going to really trick, especially those that are trading zero days to uh, expiration options. They're really going to trick them, burn premiums, and destroy the late participants that are entering without an edge or without a plan. So we hit demand, and how I view days like this, all day sell-offs, a quick little gem. Um, I just posted a 45-minute a long video in the Discord, a private trade recap, basically going over all of this, uh, all my trades last week in depth. And I will explain this thoroughly, but really quick. When rallies fail, for example, failed rally, another failed rally right here. You know, another failed rally right here. Number one, if we're at demand, don't be a first buyer, meaning don't get long on the first sign of upside movement. Wait for the, for the buyers or demand to form. Then you could take the market long. Once we have buyers factored into the market, number two, this is how you get runners and this is how you get an all day sell off when buyers are weak and when demand is not being respected. Rallies fail like this, putting in lower lows, lower highs, another one right here. And this is how you could keep on a trade. And I was in this trade all day and I sold at 255 when the market was down here. Just because we broke above the previous high, after the higher high was broken and the lower lows, lower highs, pattern was out of the picture. That's when I got out. And because my entry was so high, this was a stress-free trade that I knew had a high out of working out. And I had a very large conviction in the setup. Um, it was very, very simple analysis. And I'm going to explain two other trades that I actually made in my last recap video, basically going over this and how I have high conviction and trust myself, which I recommend uh, it only comes with screen time and experience, but you need to do in order to trade successfully. Everybody that I know that trades successfully has confidence and trust in themselves. A large portion of trading is with self-belief, believing in yourself, believing in your setups, and being persistent enough to do the work that's necessary to build this confidence and build consistency in your trading. So the last YouTube video I posted, I talked about this trade, also talked about it in the 45 minute long recap in the Discord, uh, but it was, it was good analysis, it just did not work out. And this is why you have to trust your setups 
and do something on a daily basis that's going to give you sustainability in your trading. My edge and how I trade is what gives me longevity and is what's sustainable in my trading. I could repeat my process day after day. Some days I have losing trades, some days I have winning trades. But as long as I put risk on and follow that, that's what builds my consistency and that's how I get consistency. So the pre-market plan back on July 20th, this was last Wednesday, by the time you're watching this or I post it, we were watching for the market to have a hard time at 3949 to 3968 supply. If we could manage to get above this, there's not much supply or resistance and we could target 4000 and 4010. So essentially was supply zones last week were not very reliable at all. It's normal. It's if the market's trending up, we use supply to take profits instead of looking to get short. So what I did was is I took the market long once we started consolidating near the highs, speculating that 4,000 and 4,010 was going to trade if we could start fueling more buyers. So I took the market long just right here when we looked like this. Stop loss below this low where I'm hovering over right here. And then the market dipped and I stopped out of this trade. The idea here was buyers were buying, creating demand by this lower pink box. That's actually a new demand zone. Buyers were strong intraday. Equities were very strong as well at this point. You could check equities. Tesla, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, very strong at this point. So I had no problem getting in long, following my plan, targeting the supply zone above. It did not work out. I stopped out of this trade. My analysis was incorrect. Totally fine, right? Well, let's go to Thursday's action now. So now we're fast forwarding a day and the market was completely balanced, meaning we were consolidating sideways above demand and below supply. Now the pre-market plan on this day was very, very simple. If we break above 3972 supply, I'm open to playing longs, targeting 4,000 and 4,010. The same exact thing I just explained the day prior and I took a loss on, I took the same exact setup and I literally got long at the same exact price point around 3,975, stop loss below 3,965. And this trade worked out in my favor. My stop loss did not trigger. A lot of people stopped out on this dip. You only stop out if your stop loss triggers or your target hits. This dip is noise. My stop loss never triggered. My stop loss was right here. And my target was 4,000. I'm in up here, risking about 10 points to make about 20 points, two to one risk to reward. A lot of people stopped out on this dip. Again, when everybody's bearish, figure out ways to be bullish. When everybody's stopping out, that might give you an ideal point to get long or short. And then my target hit and I sold four minutes before end of day. So this is a point, you know, I'm not trying to sit here and, and say, oh, I'm right. The point I'm trying to make here is trust your analysis and have conviction in your setups. This was the same exact setup I took the next day, right? The same exact setup. If I didn't have confidence or conviction in myself and I didn't trust my analysis, like a lot of people don't do, a lot of people think, okay, I just took a loss. You know, I'm not a good trader or, you know, what I'm doing is not working out for me. They put their head down after one loss. But because I have conviction and trust my analysis, I'm not putting my head down. This is what works for me. And I know if I could repeat this day after day, it's how I make money consistently. So it's my process. I have conviction in my setups. A lot of people put their head down and don't trust themselves because of past failures. The past is past. You can't get it back. You don't want it back. The future is unknown. We don't know the outcome. But what we have right now is the present moment and we have to trust what we're thinking, think less, and do what the market's telling us in real time. I'm going to leave you all off on that note. If you enjoyed, drop a like, comment if you have any questions. And definitely check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course. It will come with access to the Discord at no extra charge. There will be changes coming soon, but I'm ending it. Peace out.